so the thing Bomjon told in front of everyone was why you didn't come when I was calling you. So actually my sin was that, and I know it very well, during the, that one year in 2011, he was calling me to return secretly uh, to Halkoria jungle in secret ways and paths so that others don't see me uh, repeatedly. But in the same time, he was telling to his followers that I am a witch and uh, they have to attack me and kill me when they when I arrive to Halkoria. So because I was getting this news, it came back to me. I was confused and I was I was afraid to go there when he was calling me. It's obvious. Who would be not afraid if you hear that uh, they have the order to attack you and kill you? So that that day when he kidnapped me, I also didn't come on the public way. I came on the secret path, not secret path. It's a normal jungle, jungle path, but I came early in the morning when um, villagers can hardly see me. But still there were witnesses. Anyway, uh, so the, the main sin Bom John was beating and torturing me for was that I didn't come earlier. Uh, which, if now I think about it, which would mean that if I come, for example, when he started to call me, it was already the spring 2011, when he started to call me back. Uh, uh, he would just uh, kidnap me and torture me earlier and probably even kill me. So I don't think, <laughs> I don't think it would be any difference. Uh, and when I was, anyway... Let's not go into philosophical uh, th uh, theories, but this was my main sin. sin. And uh, he also told me, but you also are a sinner because you are a greed, lobe, uh, you have an ego. I mean, you have a own will. You still have your own will, what fanatic cults don't like if you have your own will, yes? Because I am a strong, uh, I have a strong willpower and I have a strong self-discipline. Discipline. So Rambonjor doesn't like such people. He wanted to destroy, demoralize me, and he couldn't do it over this year, 2011, like he did, he, like he did with all his other foreigner followers, including Andrea Good, Tomek Tarnowski, Michael Leon, Ivy Jugo, Kim Guyen, uh, etc. They were all brainwashed. I was not brainwashed. Uh, so I was not even bowing to his feet like the others did. So he didn't like it. Uh, he wanted to subdue me, yes, because I had uh, already, I was a yogini, I had spiritual power. So oh, I had uh, my own will. That was my sin in the eyes of Rambomjan. And then oh, when he told me this, uh, Anyway, I didn't feel at that moment that these sins would be so big that he would have the right to kill me for them. Because just if you look around all these people, we are all greedy. Uh, anyone who is eating and takes one spoon more from a tasty food, is it not greed? We can take, we can go back to any, when you feel uh, comfortable swimming in a cooling uh, cooling uh, pond when it's hot weather and you just don't want to give, go out immediately is it not greed you feel you want to enjoy physical things a little more a little more pressure it's normal the body body is doing his own uh, requests I want more food I want more but let's not go to this actually I thought I, I realized that is is not okay that he's killing me for these sins because I'm not more sinner than the guys who are standing around me. I would say even I am less sinner because I am. I was never torturing other people in the name of Dharma like Tomek Tarnowski Dorje or Darshan Limbu or directly Bomjon is doing. So I innerly, I didn't accept it. And finally he didn't kill me and he suddenly let me go and they tied me to the jungle again. So I just wanted to tell you that this was my mental setting, that Rambadur Bomjun uh, 
in the first weeks I was not weeping, I was not crying, but I was not, I had a <coughs> total self-discipline because I was doing yoga. It's not by accident. I think if he abducted anyone from the street who not, never had a spiritual practice, uh, that person would break down. And many, I know many people who abducted had been uh, here, had broken down psychologically and uh, got, got crazy, actually, uh, men, men, nervous breakdown, or died. Yes, because you can die even for, from fear. And I can tell you, the terror Bomjon is creating to a person who is, ter who is tortured, it's, it's so huge, it's so immense and uh, intense that you are just overwhelmed by the permanent overly fear they are making you but come on i am a yogini can anyone or anything frighten a yogini who had experienced kundalini uh, real yogis will know why i am saying this because even on the way of Buddha, or even the Christian mystics know, uh, you do face Mara at one point, you do face Satan at one point on your spiritual path. And it's not a joke, it's uh, the second most powerful being after God. So, can anyone who is, let's say, at least at the level of Satan, or a little lower level than Satan, at, at least at the level of Mara, or a little lower level of Mara, like Rambom Jonis, can anyone frighten you more than Mara himself? So yes, it was terrible. I, I cannot boast that I am a perfect yogini. I would be God, and I am not Buddha, I am not God. I am a human being who thanks to her, Sadhguru had the, the grace, the mercy to experience the Ashtanga Yoga's higher level, but it's the blessing of my Guru. Me, as a human being, would be never strong enough to get as high. But yes, I do know what are the frightening techniques of Mara. And you can see in the, the Kianu Reeves Buddha biography, I think the film's name is Little Buddha or something. Uh, it shows very similar things than Rambadur Bomjun uh, and his followers um, were trying to create for me. Like, um, it's always on one side huge terrorizing that you are going to die, you are going to suffer uh, all your life, or you get, you are already in hell, they were telling me. This is hell already, and the uh, sound effects and everything was hell, and uh, the sports and uh, blood and uh, everything was hellish, of course. And the uh, things, they were looking, coming with chains and weapons, and of course you know that you are in hell already. But more, what more there are always offering you a choice to avoid this help by totally serving Bomjon, totally serving the Satan, totally serving the Mara. And then you could kind of avoid the help. But it's but you know, because you are a yogini, because you are a mystic, you know that it's not true. Because the main uh, the main um, characteristic of Mara is lie. No, you you must realize. So, as uh, when they were torturing me, I knew everything is lie, the good things and the bad things. Everything is illusion. So, Ram Bomjon was torturing a yogini. He took a task, a very difficult task on himself. But I cannot say that he didn't break me, you know, he did break me, yes, he break me 90%, he did break my spiritual uh, self-confidence, my body, he break my body health forever, uh, my energetical uh, balance, he break my hands, of course, he break my hands, 
he did break me spiritually, but thanks to my Sadhguru, thanks to God, and uh, thanks to my spiritual lineage, there is still there was still 10% which kept me alive. And uh, there are things which uh, you cannot Im imagine. When they tell you, no one told me I will be only three months on the chain. They, did, they told me that I will be forever on the chain. So your body muscles get uh, degenerated because you are not using your body. You are chained. There was one chain from my neck and two chains from my ankles. And there were no chains on my hands because they were hanging like this after they broke my wrists. So um, you are already months and months on this chain. So what should you do on this chain? The question is, no? Uh, all your life, the rest of your life. I, I was 43 at that time. So... I will I will die quickly, I thought, because it's not possible for the body to survive. But until I die, I didn't want to die in horror and uh, suffering, I mean, in a hellish feeling. I wanted to die with a clear mind. This was my main intention. And uh, in a spiritual mind setting. And uh, because you are chained many months and you don't have enough nutrition, so your mind, uh, and you have no computer, you have no books, you have, you don't speak with anyone, there is no communication. The only communication was Darshan Limbu, who didn't actually speak with me, he was telling me things. I didn't really have the right, or if I spoke something, he didn't really react, or he lied to me, of course. And he was just uh, coming and torturing me, beating me and telling me, you are a bitch, you, you, are, you are rubbish, you are shit, you are going to die. And the other torturer, Tomek Tarnowski, he was not speaking at all. So these two demons are the only people you can communicate with for three months. So the brain also gets kind of lazy. And yes, they did something, uh, they did give me some kind of drugs, that's clear. But even, it's a chemical thing, but is not spirit stronger than chemical poisons? So I was practicing meditation and I tried to get over this bodily suffering and the terrible, the terror and fear and worries. Tomorrow I'm going to die in two, three hours and I will going to be killed. Things like this they were telling me. So I was trying to meditate and I was trying to pray, of course, but what else? In, when you are in this, such a hellish, hellish uh, situation, you are just, yes, is there God? Is there no God? Oh, please, God, I know you are real. Why are you not seeing me? Why you allow them to do this? I was permanently praying, begging God and the gods of the land of Nepal. And but because there is one important thing, the free will. Uh, I was captured because I agreed with my free will. I, arri I arrived to Bomjun when he was calling me. He invited me and I believed him. He misused my free will because I was in illusion that he is a Buddha, that he is a he is spiritual. So my free will, he could capture me only thanks to my free will. So that's why very long divine beings and the highest God couldn't help me because I had been captured thanks to my free choice. I wanted to serve Bom John. I wanted to help him. I wanted to get in the deep areas of his meditation and know what he wants to do with me. I wanted to know what is this connection with the jungle of Halkoria, my connection. There are many deep things which I wanted to explore and offer my spiritual attainment to him. This is a huge um, illusion. I was offering my spiritual attainment, the gifts, the siddhis, how many times I was praying, oh God, give to this poor Nepali teenager all my siddhis which I attained because 
he's a Buddha, he's enlightened, he's so powerful and I don't need it and blah blah blah. So God and the divine beings and the angels, anyway, how do you call the highest rishis, were weeping. I looked around how Korea they had been. This is like an inner vision, of course. I didn't see them with my open eyes. But when you are already half dead, then you are in like, like in a kind of half uh, sleeping, half uh, you don't have power, physical power. You, your body doesn't get what it needs to survive. So you are half dead. You do see things which could be told hallucination. But uh, spiritual people can kind of discriminate what is hallucination from the chemical uh, things in your brain and what is uh, a spiritual experience. So there was spiritual experience during this uh, time in, on the chain and I did see these, do these gods and uh, divine beings weeping surrounding Halkoria and weeping, weeping, weeping. And I knew what does that mean. I knew that they cannot help me. And uh, I was turning to the highest God. And my special patron in Nepal, Durga Devi, the Devi, the Divine Mother, and she was weeping and I turned to the Bodhisattvas of Tara, of uh, Avalokiteshwar. They were weeping. And today I know they were weeping. The divine beings are weeping because they see Bumjon is destroying Dharma on earth. Uh, they were weeping because of me as well. Because symbolically I am one of, I'm one of those people who experience the highest level of kundalini yoga, of yoga, ashtanga yoga. I don't like the expressions kundalini yoga, of ashtanga yoga, because it, it's necessarily through the power of kundalini anyway. So they were weeping because I am carrying in me the tradition of yoga. And Bomjon wanted to blaspheme the tradition, the spiritual tradition of yoga in my person. So, in, during these three months, I was praying, uh, please release me from this. This is injustice because I didn't harm him. And uh, I was searching, of course, in my, what could be my great sin that I, I got into this terrible situation of illusion. And during when I was in those chains, uh, then uh, they were... Just a few meters from me, they were uh, celebrating. There, were, there was his settlement of followers and follower, f foreigners as well. And I was hearing uh, their daily life, how they were cooking, how they were laughing, the children play, were playing. Uh, but they couldn't come near to me because there was a barbed wire first fence and they were patrolling uh, the area where I had been uh, tortured. So the, even the settlers, the followers of Bomjon, although they saw me in the first weeks still locked up in their houses, but they didn't know anymore, they didn't even care anymore to tell the truth, how and in what way is he torturing me, if he killed me in the jungle, they didn't care. They lived their happy life, spiritual Maitri life in the settlement, which was really just like five minutes walk from my tree where I was tied. So how would you feel, uh, apart from the torture of your body, of your uh, spirit, of your soul, you also get a kind of social torture, I would say, because you realize all these people who used to be your friends, with whom you were volunteering together, translating Bom John's uh, prayer together, they know you are somewhere here and they don't care, they don't want to even rescue you. Uh, they have seen that you had been beaten by him and they didn't go and alert police. What's this? You just uh, cannot digest it, no? Are there 
human beings at all? Am I really in, in, in hell where actually people who are walking in human bodies are, all, are actually demons which enjoy that me and maybe others are tortured? Then you um, cannot digest it, really. You cannot digest. Day by day you hear them enjoying their daily life and <laughs> even making music. Uh, in mantras, music, dancing, uh, and I know you are there. And from the pictures which emerged after the Maitri Puja about the daily life of these people around the time when I was still changed, chained, you get even, you get even more shocked. Not possible. Not possible. Those people live their daily lives. They continue to live with the conscience that they were accomplices of a torture of a human being uh, and rape uh, and chaining for three months. It's not a joke. But they're just happy, laughing and enjoying. Children are playing. They are enjoying their life as if nothing happened. Uh, that I couldn't digest, of course, uh, when I was on those chains. And I was known in the Google group and uh, in Nepal as well as an, in, as an intellectual. Uh, I don't consider it a sin, but because Nepalis are so illiterate and so uneducated, they hated me for my intellectuality. Kind of, I don't know. So they were ridiculing me. Haha, you know everything because you read so many books. Just Badurvaiba was telling me. Just Badurvaiba didn't read any book in his life because he cannot read. <laughs> he is one of the main uh, political supporters of Rambomjan and spokespersons, but he cannot read. So they were boasting about their inability to read and humiliating me because I am an European intellectual. So I will continue you in the next part of my video. Now with the, this video I finish. This was a kind of introduction, but it became long. I will continue about the details, what actually I was doing on the chains. I mean, how can you survive uh, a torture on a chain by Rambom John Wen or anyone else, similar demon, <laughs> when uh, you hear that you are going to be there all your, the rest of your life? How can you survive? Because many of you will most probably at one point become Bom Jun's victims as well. Because if you are a follower of him, at one point, I, I can promise you, he's going to use you as well in the same way. Because this is his main program. So I would like to prepare you how to survive when you become tortured on chains. Because there are there is a, a, a strength in human uh, spirit. You, we know it from people who survived somewhere in, without food in the mountains, who survived uh, in, during Holocaust, no? Uh, but apart from that strength, uh, I am also a yogini, so just one more thing I would like to know. When I, Darshan told me that you are not alone in Marichi, Actually, Bom John, this is Bom John's new dharma, and uh, like you, we are going around in this jungle to beat other people as well. I didn't believe it. I couldn't believe it. It's just absurd. It's nonsense. It cannot be. I was telling, I'm a yogini. I can manage. It's terrible. It's hell, but I am inside very strong. I can manage, but... Please don't do it in, to normal people who don't have practiced self-discipline, who don't have self-control of mind and body, because they will not survive this kind of torture. They would just get nervous breakdown and die, literally die from the terror. So then I started to worry that, no, 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 don't do it to so-called people from the street. Then, then it's not okay. But we know very well now that Bom John is doing it for normal villagers, villagers as well, without yogi, yoga practice. So that's why I would like to give you some hints 
how to survive extreme conditions from a government supported demonic guru which is not going to stop and going to continue to do this what he did to me to more and more people and most probably even now when I am speaking he does have some victims somewhere in his ashrams chained, locked up or otherwise extremely tortured by violence and sexual abuse so uh, be prepared and uh, watch my next video where I describe you the, the human side of how to survive a chain a chain uh, hostage time by a monster.